Thank you for viewing this educational program. This module introduces a condition called interstitial cystitis, or IC, also known as painful bladder syndrome, or PBS. A separate module is available that discusses treatment options for this condition. This presentation is based on up-to-date medical literature. It is meant to be comprehensive. However, your experience or the experience of your healthcare provider may be different in one or more ways. For this reason, MD Conversation modules should be thought of as educational tools. They are not meant to provide specific advice or influence the choices you make. Please feel free to view this presentation as many times as you wish. You may also want to use the player on your left to repeat a particular slide or skip ahead. This condition was formerly known as just interstitial cystitis, or IC, and the term painful bladder syndrome, or PBS, is now being used more commonly by doctors in this field. For the rest of this presentation, we will refer to it simply as interstitial cystitis, or IC. IC is a chronic condition of pelvic pain and urinary symptoms. Patients experience persistent symptoms like those of a bladder infection, but no bacteria are found in the urine. Interstitial cystitis usually, but not always, begins with a process in the bladder, then becomes a chronic pain condition in the pelvis. It is common for patients to feel abdominal pain, which worsens as the bladder fills with urine and is relieved by urinating. It can be a burning sensation, pressure, an ache, or just discomfort. Some patients, however, feel more pain at the urethra, lower abdomen, or lower back. Women may feel pain in the vagina, which increases during sexual intercourse and before their menstrual periods begin. Men may experience pain in the scrotum, testicles, or penis. IC affects about 1 million Americans. It is more common in women by a ratio of 5 to 1. About 10 to 50 percent of cases may go away with time, and about 10 percent of cases are rated as severe. There are several theories to explain how interstitial cystitis arises, but none of these have been proven. These theories include an infectious cause, a leaky bladder lining, so-called mast cell activation, an abnormal immune reaction, and a change in nerve cells of the bladder. The infection theory proposes that a bladder infection with a bacteria or virus leads to inflammation in the bladder wall which continues even after the infectious organism, or germ, is cleared from the urine. This inflammation causes the pain and bladder symptoms of IC. The leaky lining theory suggests that an abnormal bladder lining allows substances to leak across into the wall of the bladder and cause inflammation. The bladder lining is normally covered and protected by a mucus layer made of special molecules called glycosaminoglycans, or GAGs. A defect in this lining might allow substances to cross deeper into the wall of the bladder. Mast cells are special cells normally involved in allergic reactions. It is suggested that there may be an increased production of these cells in interstitial cystitis and other stress-related conditions. Mast cells release a special chemical called histamine, which causes pain, swelling, and scarring, and prevents healing of the bladder lining. The body's immune system is responsible for responding to all types of challenges to one's health, from irritation to infection, injury, allergy, cancer, and many others. The immune system is likely involved in all of the proposed mechanisms of IC. The autoimmune theory proposes that substances involved in an inflammatory reaction can change nerve cells in the bladder wall. This, in turn, leads to even more inflammation, mast cell release of histamine, and damage to the bladder lining. The theory of a change in bladder nerves suggests that a repeated stimulus, such as inflammation in the bladder wall, can lead to an increase in the number and activity of sensory nerves in the bladder and pelvic area. This is likely the final pathway by which early changes can lead to persistent long-standing symptoms of pain and bladder irritation and why these symptoms are so hard to get rid of even after the initial stimulus is removed or controlled. 
Interstitial cystitis is a chronic pain condition. This develops because repeated pain signals from the bladder build up and cause changes to cells in the spinal cord. Pain signals then become stronger and last longer, and this is called pain memory. Chronic pain explains why bladder treatments sometimes do not relieve pain in patients with IC. Several things are observed to cause flare-ups of IC symptoms in many patients. These include diet, stress, menstrual cycle, and allergies. Certain foods can irritate the bladder and cause flare-ups of IC symptoms for a few days after eating them. It is good to watch your diet and keep track of things that seem to cause flare-ups, and to try eliminating certain things one at a time until you are familiar with what foods you are sensitive to. Foods to watch out for include foods and drinks that contain caffeine, such as chocolate, coffee, tea, and colas. Fermented substances, including cheeses and alcohol. Aged, canned, cured, processed, and smoked meats and fish that contain nitrates or nitrites. Fava beans, lima beans, onions, rhubarb, and tofu. Rye and sourdough breads. Most nuts except for almonds, cashews, and pine nuts. Spicy foods. Acidic foods and juices, such as oranges, tomatoes, and cranberry juice. Some artificial sweeteners, such as aspartame or saccharin. And preservatives, such as MSG. The kidneys are the organs which produce urine. Urine is made up mostly of water, but contains waste products as well. Two thin tubes, called the ureters, connect the kidneys to the bladder. Urine flows into the bladder via these tubes. It remains in the bladder until it is time to urinate, or pee. The bladder is a hollow, balloon-shaped organ with a muscular lining that is flexible. As it fills with urine, it stretches. A muscular valve, called the sphincter, prevents urine from leaking out of the bladder before it is time to urinate. When it is time to urinate, the sphincter relaxes to allow the bladder to empty. Compared to a normal bladder, the bladder of someone with IC is functionally smaller, and in advanced cases, it may be physically smaller also, with an inflamed, less healthy-looking lining. Symptoms usually suggest a diagnosis of interstitial cystitis, although the final diagnosis requires that any other condition that might cause these symptoms be ruled out first. This is because there is no hard and fast test yet available to definitely confirm the diagnosis. Testing that may be required to rule out bladder conditions include urine tests, cystoscopy, and sometimes a bladder biopsy. Special tests have been developed, including the anesthetic challenge test, the potassium chloride test, and bladder distension. There are many other bladder conditions that must be ruled out in this process, many of which are listed here. They include a bladder infection, also called a urinary tract infection, or UTI, bladder cancer, and other inflammatory conditions, such as radiation effects, schistosomiasis, a parasite infection, so-called eosinophilic cystitis, and medications that can cause inflammation. Also considered are endometriosis, urethral conditions, and neurologic problems. Cystoscopy is a quick outpatient procedure which is typically done under local anesthesia by putting some freezing jelly into the urethra. These tests are done to evaluate the lining of the bladder to rule out other bladder conditions. Bladder biopsy may be required at the time of cystoscopy if changes are seen in the bladder during cystoscopy. A biopsy involves taking a small sample of the bladder lining to look at under a microscope in the lab. The anesthetic challenge test involves placing an anesthetic solution into the bladder through a catheter or tube. A topical anesthetic is a drug that can diminish pain. Placing a topical anesthetic solution into the bladder will numb the nerves in the bladder that sense pain called the sensory nerves. Such a solution in the bladder of a patient with IC will reduce their pain, and this in turn confirms that their pain originates in the bladder and goes along with the diagnosis of IC. 
in the potassium chloride test, sodium chloride, then potassium chloride, are passed into the bladder through a small tube or catheter. Responses to each solution are noted, and it has been observed that IC patients are more likely to experience their typical symptoms of discomfort after the potassium chloride solution is given. There is controversy as to the value of the KCL test, with some doctors using it and others not. Certainly, it is commonly used in research studies on this condition. Bladder distension, or hydrodistension, is commonly used for both diagnosis and treatment of IC by some doctors. This procedure is performed under general anesthesia. In other words, the patient is asleep. The lining of the bladder is stretched or distended with sterile water at a certain pressure until its capacity, or maximum size, is reached. The surgeon will make note of this capacity, then refill the bladder for a longer time. The bladder is then reinspected. If the bladder capacity is less than normal, for example only a cup or so, and small areas of bleeding are seen, that is felt to be diagnostic of IC. The capacity and appearance of the bladder also gives the surgeon an idea of the severity of the condition, which can help guide other treatment. In summary, interstitial cystitis, also called painful bladder syndrome, is a common chronic condition. The exact cause is not known, but research is ongoing. The diagnosis of this condition depends on a person's symptoms and on ruling out other possible causes of them. Early diagnosis and treatment may prevent progression. These resources on the internet may help you find further information or support about your condition. This is a sample of modern references which discuss IC, available at your local medical library. We sincerely hope that this module has furthered your understanding of interstitial cystitis. We wish you the best for the future, and thank you once again for viewing this educational program. Cystitis, or IC. IC is a chronic condition of pelvic pain and urinary symptoms. Patients experience persistent symptoms like those of a bladder infection, but no bacteria are found in the urine. Interstitial cystitis usually, but not always, begins with or skip ahead. This condition was formerly known as just interstitial cystitis, or IC, and the term painful bladder syndrome, or PBS, is now being used more commonly by doctors in this field. For the rest of this presentation, we will refer to it simply as interstitial cystitis. Thank you for viewing this educational program. This module introduces a condition called interstitial cystitis, or IC, also known as ACE. For this reason, MD conversation modules should be thought of as educational tools. They are not meant to provide specific advice or influence the choices you make. Please feel free to view this presentation as many times as you wish. You may also want to use the player on your left to repeat a particular slide, painful bladder syndrome, or PBS. A separate module is available that discusses treatment options for this condition. This presentation is based on up-to-date medical literature. It is meant to be comprehensive. However, your experience or the experience of your healthcare provider may be different in one or more ways.